gives me pleasure now to introduce candidate for state for U.S. Senate, Steve Novak. Thanks a lot, John. So that's a funny idea to Google someone. I remember reading Randy Cohen, the ethicist in the New York Times, and somebody asked him, is it okay to Google a prospective date? And he said, well, I think it's okay to Google someone, which is not as obscene as it sounds. <laughs> it's, I just have to say that it's really very nice for me to see Brad Avakian about to become a statewide official. I remember when I was the chief of staff for the Democrats in the state Senate in 97, 98, there were only 10 of them. And the Senate Democrats worked really hard to elect a bunch more. And Brad Avakian was running for the state Senate that year. And we elected three others. We fell short with Brad. But he worked hard and we had to divert a lot of resources to beat him. And I'm, it makes him feel really old. You know, now he's all grown up and he's in statewide office. <laughs> <laughs> so about 70 years ago, FDR said, this generation has a rendezvous with destiny. And they did. They had a depression to overcome and a war to win and an economy to rebuild after the war. And they did all those things. They overcame the depression by putting people to work, building roads and bridges and schools and our hydropower system. And then they went out and won the war. And after the war, they rebuilt the economy, a stronger, fairer economy. They invested in the GI Bill, as opposed to the kind of treatment our veterans have gotten coming home from this war. And how did they do that? They all pitched in. During the war, regular folks grew victory gardens and they conserved gasoline, and they conserved rubber. Some of them even gathered up scraps of rubber to send in for the war effort. And wealthier folks really paid their fair share of taxes. And some of them, a lot of them, didn't even complain about it. There was a guy named E.A. Filene, a department store magnate, very wealthy guy, big fan of FDR. And somebody asked him once, Mr. Filene, why are you supporting FDR? The guys raised your taxes through the roof. And Filene said, why shouldn't the American people take half my money from me? After all, I took all of it from them. <laughs> <laughs> that was the spirit that we had in the United States in those years. And we need that spirit again, because we've got huge challenges to overcome. We've got to get out of this terrible war and roll back the assault on civil liberties that's gone with it. We've got to reform the health care system not only to give coverage to everybody, but control costs that are bankrupting both private industry and will eventually bankrupt the government. We've got to fight the threat of global warming by reducing our energy use and also by investing in developing renewable energy, which will require some big investments. And it requires big investments to do more mass transit as well. We've got to do all these things without running up the already humongous national debt and getting to the point where China could throw us into chaos just by cutting off the credit card. And we've got to rebuild a fairer economy. You know, CEOs used to get along just fine making 30 or 40 times what the average worker made. Now it seems like they feel like they have to make 500 times what the average worker made. The good thing is, though, that as I campaign around this state, I find Oregonians willing to do their part, willing to bear some burdens pay some prices in order to get the work done. When I talk to doctors about reforming the health care system, I find some, like a radiologist I met a few weeks ago, who said, oh, listen, we have to reform this system, and we got to change it in ways where I'd make less money. I may got like a bandit under the current system, but I recognize that the system has to change. I talk to people who make a lot of money, you know, if you're running for office, you've got to talk to some people who make money because some people have to make contributions. You know, we accept all contributions at novikforsenate.com. Uh, you can go to the website. But you talk to some folks who make some money. And I talk about the need to reform the tax code so we go back to wealthier folks paying a fair share so that we can stave off the threats to Medicare and Social Security, so we can make investments in renewable energy, so we can have health care for everybody. And I've had folks volunteer to me, folks who make a bunch of money, oh yeah, we absolutely need to do something. And you know what burns me up? 
The fact that I stop paying Social Security taxes once my income hits 100000 I think that's silly. I think I make a lot of money, I should pay Social Security tax on all my income. That's the kind of spirit I hear from people in Oregon. And I think that's the kind of spirit we can tap into throughout the United States. I think that people are ready to become the next greatest generation. I think the people today in this state and around the country, I don't think that those folks in the 30s and 40s and 50s got nothing on us. I think we're ready to do the job. And what people are waiting for is strong, progressive, principled leaders who are willing to fight for their principles. I've spent the past 20 years, well, I'll just summarize it, suing polluters and fighting Bill Sizemore. <laughs> And, we've been, you know, and I've had a lot of fun doing it. And I'm looking forward to making a difference in the United States Senate, making sure that we become the next gener greatest generation and we conquer our challenges just as they conquered theirs. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.